J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with I'm Bubbling Over from the motion picture Wake Up and Live. <laughs> Bright new suits, bright spring flowers. Those are some of the sights that make the Easter parade the bright and colorful scene it is. A scene that you can see only once a year. But here's a delight to the eye and a thrill to the taste that you can enjoy the year round. Jell-O for dessert. Yes, indeed, when you bring on a colorful mold of Jell-O, you certainly give your family a treat. For dessert should look as good as it tastes. And that's one of the many grand things about Jell-O. It looks delicious, and it is delicious and refreshing with a flavor of real fresh fruit. Jell-O has that extra rich fruit flavor, which makes it the most popular gelatin dessert in the world. So brighten up your menus with a gay Jell-O dessert. Order Jell-O in any of its six delicious flavors tomorrow from your dealer. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. Bubbling Over, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra in Hollywood. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you to the Dearborn Street Station in Chicago, where we find Jack and the rest of the gang about to board the train for California. Take it away, Chicago! Harmony transfer, baggage transfer. <clears throat> hey, Red Cap, carry my grips a little higher. There's some things hanging out. Yes, sir. All aboard! Train leaving on track seven for Kansas City, Dodge City, Sioux City, Carson City, Salt Lake City, and Pottstown. Boys? Hey, just, just drop the grips down here till I get my crowd together. Huh? Yes, Mr. Bunny. The name's Benny. Well, this is Easter. Hmm. <laughs> Come along, Millicent. The train will be leaving any minute. Oh, look, Ma, there's Jack Benny. I want his autograph. Wait till we get to Hollywood and you can get a good one. Hmm. Say, Don. Yes, Jack. Have you seen Mary and Kenny? We haven't got much time. Well, I saw Mary standing in front of the hotel a little while ago. That's fine. Why don't she get over here? She's waiting for a cab to match her new Easter hat. Oh, hope the depot matches her dress. See if you can find her, will you? And uh, Kenny, too. Okay. All aboard! Train leaving for San Pedro, San Diego, San Jose, and San Francisco, starring Clark Gable and Jeanette McDonald. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. You all set? Yeah. Where's the train for San Hollywood? Right over there. Gee, but you're all bundled up. I bet you're glad you're leaving all this ice and snow. Huh? You said it. I'm so cold, I'm all geese pimples. That's goose. Well, I got more than one. Oh. <laughs> Hey, Red Cap. Yes, sir. Uh, take my grips to car 24, drawing room A. I did that three times already, and a lady keeps throwing them out. <laughs> oh, 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 that's right. I'm in lower seven. I was thinking of taking a drawing room, folks. Uh, say, conductor, where does that train leave from? The one to Los Angeles. Tracks 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Mm, that's a pretty long train, isn't it? No, the engineer brought it in sideways. Oh, <laughs> Depot. All aboard! Train leaving for one, two, Kalamazoo, three, four, Baltimore, five, six, Battle Creek, seven, eight. Don't be late, boy. I'll have to take that trip sometime. Jack, and we better get into our car. Don, I'm not getting on till Kenny gets there. Say, Mary, run over to the newsstand and buy me a magazine, will you? Uh, which one? Oh, anything. Get me a copy of the nudist. I like those outdoor scenes. Okay. Oh, I got to send a wire. Say, information clerk. Yes? Where can I send a telegram? To my wife. It's her birthday. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Benny. Yes? My daughter insists 
upon getting your autograph. Do you mind? Oh, not at all. I'm so glad you're going to be on the train. Uh, here you are, darling. Thanks, Mr. Benny. Well, well, so you're the little girl who wants my autograph. Yeah, ain't I screwy? <laughs> Pardon me, lady. I'm looking for my gang. Oh, Mary, did you get me that magazine? Uh, here it is, Jack. The nudist. Thanks. And here's some smoke glasses. Smoke glasses? What are they for? Wait till you get to page 10. <laughs> Give me that. I'm reading a continued story. Oh, Jack, Jack, here's Kenny. Hello, everybody. Hey, Kenny, where have you been? The train leaves in two minutes. Well, I was taking a bath. Mm, you picked a fine time. What's that towel sticking out of your shirt? I'm not dry yet. <laughs> oh, you're not dry yet. What do you got in that bucket? I'm taking some snow to California. Oh. My mother never saw any. No, isn't that silly, Mary? It'll be water by the time we get there. My mother will believe me. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Well, <laughs> well, go on. Let's get on the train, fellas. Gee, we haven't got much time. Oh, Ford! Train leaving on track nine for Fort Madison, Kansas City, Strawberry, Raspberry, Wichita, Curry, Orange, Lemon, Albuquerque, and Lime. And that's us. Say, Don, did you bribe that announcer? No, but I'll reward him. Well, let's go. Our car's up forward. Come along, Millicent. You can get the fireman's autograph later. Let's see, where's car 24? Oh, here we are, Mary. Uh, gee, Jack, our car must be awfully crowded. Why? Look at those three men riding under it. Well, they're probably fresh air fiends. Oh. Come on. <laughs> here, Mary, I'll help you up. You too, Don. And Kenny, don't spill that bucket of snow. I won't. Here you are, Red Cap. Here's 50 cents. This is a dime. Look at your script, not the coin. <laughs> Chicago, here we go. Goodbye. Oh, Jack, what do you think I forgot? What? My snowshoes. What do you want with snowshoes on the train? I bet he wants to go for a hike in the bucket. Yeah. Oh, get in the car. Looks like New Mexico. How'd you rest last night? Oh, not so good, not so good. I'm not built for an upper berth. No. You look more like a compartment. <laughs> you must have slept on your back. You were snoring jello all night. Yes, I had a conscientious nightmare. Oh. Hey, Jack, are there any windows in an upper berth? No. Then who was I waving at? <laughs> you 
got me. How'd you sleep, Mary? I was up past the night writing an Easter poem. You want to hear it? Not now, Mary. No. A dear old Easter. Hey, Porter. Porter. Yes, sir? Uh, what time do we get to Albuquerque? Who? <laughs> Albuquerque. I don't know. Do we stop there? Well, certainly we stop there. My, my. <laughs> Hmm. I, I better go up and tell the engineer about that. Yeah. Yeah, do that. Uh, what's the name of that town again? Albuquerque. <laughs> Albuquerque. What they going to think up next? <laughs> Fine porter we got. Well, maybe we don't stop there, Jack. Go on. I've made this trip a thousand times. Uh, do you want to hear my poem now? A thousand times, no. I'm going into lunch. Pardon me, Mr. Benny. Yes, ma'am. I'm the lady whose daughter wanted your autograph at the station. Oh, the little girl is going to Hollywood. Yes, she's going into pictures. Well. Uh, Millicent, dear, Mr. Benny wants to meet you. Well, I was going to lunch, really. Oh, thank I, uh, you, but... but we've just had ours. Oh. Uh... Uh, come here, Millicent. You know she sings just like Lily Pond. Well, I heard Miss Pond, so don't bother with Millicent. I must... <laughs> she's so modest, I always have to force her. Not for us, you don't. Mary. No. Come, Millicent, sing for Mr. Benny. Oh, don't bother. She's probably nervous. No, look. No, look, I don't... I... No, it's good, but look, look. No. no. I don't... Now, look, I wouldn't... That's very good, very good. Oh, really, she has great possibilities. Thank you. And take your hands off her neck. Oh, pardon me. How about lunch, Jack? Who can eat now? Oh, conductor, conductor. Yes, sir? What time do we get to Albuquerque? Albuquerque? Is that on this line? <laughs> it always has been. What time do we get there? What time is it now? 1220. Thank you. La, 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 mm. <laughs> I'll bet he's going into pictures, too. Yes. Oh, listen to my poem, will you, Jack? Oh, Mary, I'm so tired. I don't uh, want to go... Dear old Easter, dear old Easter, you are with us once again. With you your... know, Mr. Benny, my daughter... Oh, lady, please. I'm... My daughter won a contest, and that's why she's going into pictures. Oh, so you're going to be in pictures, Millicent. <laughs> yeah, until a director gets fresh with me. <laughs> what a long career you'll have. <laughs> Mary, Millicent... Millicent won a contest. Contest? He yeah. looks like a water buffalo. Uh, you've never seen a water buffalo. I've never seen anything like Millicent, either. Quiet. Dear old Easter, dear old Easter, you are with us. Hello, what? fellas. Well, oh, hello, hello Kenny. Kenny. How'd you sleep last night, Kenny? Oh, I had more trouble. You did? Every time I hung my pants on the rope, the train stopped. <laughs> That kind of a train. Where have you been all morning? See, when a porter closed my upper berth, you'd think he'd wait until I got out. And you mean he folded you up in it? Yeah. Well, why don't you do something about it? Before I could think of anything, I fell asleep. Oh. Gee, I sure do need air. Sit down and open the window. Here, I'll help you, Kenny. And don't stick your head out. Uh, say, Kenny, you want to hear my Easter poem? Sure, Mary. Oh, boy, an audience. <laughs> dear old Easter, dear old Easter, you are with us once again. With your gorgeous Easter lilies and your product from the hen. Wow. How I love your Easter Apples, bunny. Apples, oranges, magazines, and programs. Get your programs here. You can't tell one pasture from another without a program. <laughs> hey, what kind of a train is this? Hey, boy, what time do we get to Albuquerque? We certainly do. Apples, oranges, magazines, and Albuquerque. You can't tell one isn't that awful? How I love your Easter bunny. Summer wild and summer tame. Yes. And the jello so delicious. How it wobbles on the train. <laughs> hey, I've noticed that. You know? Hey, Porter. Yes, sir. When I got on the train yesterday, I gave you a suit to press. Where is it? Gee, I'm lazy. Don't I remind you of Stephen Fetchett? Yeah. And what did you find out about Albuquerque? He can't press it any better than I can. <laughs> Albuquerque's a town. You better check on that. <laughs> I better get off this train, too. Say, Jack. Yeah? What's this hanging around my neck? That's a mail bag, and I told you to keep your head in. <laughs> now I'll look at you. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mary? I just saw a picture of a water buffalo. <laughs> Some witty answer. Well, Kenny, what are you going to sing on the program when we get to Hollywood? Oh, I don't know. 
I think I'll sing Trust in Me. Well, rehearse it now and brush up a little bit. That's a clever way of getting into a song while we're on a train, isn't it, folks? You sure fooled me. I thought I would, yeah. Sing, Kenny. <laughs> Where did we get the orchestra? about love's invitation Come to me without more speculation Have no fear Give me your hand my dear Trust in me in all you do have the faith I have in you love will see us through if only you trust in me come to me when things go wrong cling to me and I'll be strong We can get along as long as you trust in me. While there's a moon on high, while there's a bird to fly, while there's you and I, you can be sure of And I'll be worthy of you. Trust me, oh, I love Good, Kenny. I'm sure your song will be a big hit Sunday. I'll say it was. Say, Jack, looks like we're pulling into a station. That's right. We're slowing down. Hey, Kenny, look out of the window and see what town this is. Okay. The train stopped, Jack. Where are we? What does the sign say, Kenny? What town is this? Waiting room. <laughs> Waiting room, New Mexico. It's fine. I mean, let me look out there. Hey, Don, we're in Albuquerque. I knew the train stopped here. Boy, I'm going out to get some air. Yeah, me too. Away from me. Hey, Porter. Yeah, Lou? How long do we stop here? Well. <laughs> in Albuquerque. <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> well, there's no use talking to him. Come on, Mary. I got to send a wire. Watch your step. Hey, Jack, look at those Indians selling things. Where? Right there. I'm going over and buy a Tommy Rot. <laughs> That's a Tommy Hawk. Go ahead, Kenny. Don't be late for the train. Don, send that wire for me, will you? Okay. Oh, Jack, look at Kenny buying something from that Indian. Yeah. Hello, that. Indian. Party Boo English? Mm. Mm. What? Mm. Oh. <laughs> Tell him what you want, Kenny. Uh, me want Tommy Hawk. How much cost him? <laughs> White boy, some dope. <laughs> mm, you said it. Come on, Mary. We haven't much time. I want to go into that little novelty shop and buy some moccasins. Well, now I got to get something for my mother. Too. Yeah, let's go over. Hey, Mary, look at that sign. Heat big bargains. Let's go in. Well, customers, step into my big room and look around. <laughs> Is he an Indian? Am I a Indian, she's asking. He's an Indian, all right. What can I do for you, my pale-faced landsman? I want to get a pair of moccasins. Right feet or left feet? One of each. Sorry, we don't split them up. Hey, 
Hey, Papa, give me a nickel. Quiet. That's my little papoopsie. Oh. Jack, look at those purses. I'd like to buy one for Mama. See this bag here? It's a real rattlesnake purse. Mmm, it's pretty. Hey, wait a minute. This one is moving. Hey, Cass, that'll be dead by sundown. <laughs> Better not handle that, Mary. I'd like to see a pair of moccasins. Here you are, the finest moccasins made by our tribe. Yeah, what tribe is that? The Pony Shoppies. <laughs> well, I've heard of them. Say, these moccasins aren't bad. You haven't got much of a selection here. Who am I, Floor Shine? <laughs> well... Well, I'll take this pair, wrap them up. Would you like them wrapped in a blanket? Don't rush me. I just want moccasins, that's all. Papa, I want a nickel. Quiet, rain in the face. <laughs> Could be nose in the face, too. <laughs> Here you are, sir. This will be two ninety eight. Is there anything else? No, thanks. Wait a minute, Tenderfoot. Could you use a couple of igloos, Chief? Igloos? What's an Indian doing with an igloo? I used to be an Eskimo. I'm stuck with them. <laughs> Never mind. Come on, Mary. Oh, Jack, look at that totem pole. That's my wife. I'm stuck with her, too. <laughs> well, well, goodbye. Thank you. Call again. Yes, hello. Hey, Jack, hurry up. We miss a train. Be right with you. Come on, everybody. Oh, Don, did you send that wire to Phil Harris? Yes. He got the message. Played by yours truly, Phil Harris and his orchestra. And I want to say that it sure is a pleasure to be back on this program again. Say, Phil, how soon will Buck get here? Why, hello, Andy. He'll be here any minute now. Oh, I wish he'd get here. I got a swell present for him if he brought me one. <laughs> hey, Jack! Yeah! I'm glad to see you, Phil. You too, Andy. Uh, give me a kiss, Phil. How was that, Mary? Abe Lime is better, but you're a change. <laughs> hey, Mary, don't I get a kiss? I kissed you when I came in. Well, do it again before I cool down. <laughs> oh, boy, it sure is good to be home again. Yeah, yeah I'm going right out and kissing orange. <laughs> Say, Phil, you know that watch you gave me for Christmas? Well, I showed it to everybody, and it's the talk of New York. No kidding. Yes, well, what sir. happened in New York, Jack? What did you do all this time? Yeah, uh, give us a lowdown, Buck. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him, Don. I want to say hello to the boys in the band. Hi, well, fellas. Well, fellas, uh, Jack was out night after night, and he practically slept in his dress suit. At least it looked that way. <laughs> it was just one nightclub after another, parties and theaters. And burlesque shows and burlesque shows and burlesque shows. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went home to his hometown, Waukegan, and they gave him a great big celebration. you think he was leaving town instead of coming in. Some excitement, huh? Say, Buck. Yeah, Andy? I bet you were stuck up when you did that broadcast from the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. <laughs> from the where? Say that again, Andy. I love it. From the Waldorf Astoria. <laughs> yes, sir. That sure is a swaggy place. And look, fellas, I saved a menu from the dining room. Is that class? Hey, look at this, Andy. Gee whiz. Two eggs, 90 cents. Yep. Say, Buck, can I take this home? I want to show it to my chicken. <laughs> Go ahead, Andy, but break it to him gently. Here, let me see that menu a minute. Here you are, Don. I know what you're looking for. It's at the bottom of the page under dessert. Yep, there it is, right between the coconut custard pie and the chocolate pudding. Yes, sir, and it looks just as tempting as ever. I wonder if they mean jello. Oh, Kenny, you spoiled it. <laughs> Hey, hey Jack, uh, you sure did a lot of stepping in New York, didn't you? Did I? Come here, Phil. You too, Andy. Listen, I got some stuff to tell you. Wait a minute. You know, we gotta be... Listen, you can talk all you want to, boys, but let me tell you something. That there are plenty of rubes in New York, too. There are? Certainly. Listen, I tipped the waiter at the Waldorf Astoria, and he told me it was the first dime he'd ever seen. <laughs> Can you imagine? 
Right, Jack. Matt. Huh? Jack, tell us about those night clubs. Yeah, and how about those chorus girls? Were they pretty? Well, I don't know. Wilson was always in front of me. I don't know. <laughs> but say, fellas, no kidding. I got so much to tell you it'll take days. Hey, come on over. Come on over here in the corner. Okay, you? you know what to do, boys. Bill, you have no idea what goes on. tip on how to get the spirit of the new season. Do something different. Get a little gay with your menus and serve this new and exciting salad, Jell-O Fruit Mold. It's attractive, delicious, and easy to make. You simply dissolve one package of orange Jell-O in one pint of hot water. Chill until slightly thickened, then fold in one and one half cups of diced fruit, whatever kind of fruit you like best, apples, pears, oranges, canned pineapple, or berries. Then mold and serve. Everybody will make a big fuss over this grand springtime salad, so try it and try it real soon. Be sure that you make the Jell-O fruit mold with genuine Jell-O. J-E-L-L-O! The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with Jericho. <laughs> Tomorrow is the first day of summer, the season for light, refreshing meals. And one of the best ways to make them light and refreshing is to serve Jell-O often. No matter how warm the weather is, everybody will welcome a cool, quivering mold of colorful Jell-O. For Jell-O's extra-rich fruit flavor is just the refreshing note on which to finish any meal. And don't forget, too, that Jell-O makes marvelous summer salads. But whether you serve Jell-O for salad or dessert, be sure you get the real thing, genuine Jell-O. And you'll find genuine Jell-O on the shelves of grocers all over the country. And now we would like to take this opportunity to extend the best wishes of Jell-O to the National Retail Grocers Association annual convention in Boston this week. And we'd also like to thank the Retail Grocers of America for helping to make Jell-O the fastest-selling gelatin dessert in the entire world today. So next time you go to your grocer, ask him for genuine Jell-O. That was Jericho, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this being Father's Day, we bring you Jack Benny. Uh, Jello, yeah, this is Jack Benny talking. And, Don, I appreciate your being topical, but what was the idea of connecting me with Father's Day? I mean, what was the inference? Well, uh, Jack, speaking for the entire cast, we feel that you've helped, guided, and inspired us throughout our long association so we look up to you now as a father. Oh, thanks, Don. Thanks. For a minute there, I thought you were kidding about my age. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't do that, Jack. No. Why, we all have to reach that rocking chair stage. <laughs> well, old rocking chair ain't got me yet. <laughs> no, but you better dust it off. <laughs> uh, Don, lay off or pop a spank. <laughs> Imagine me putting Wilson over my knee. Is there a Derrick in the house? <laughs> Anyway, Don, it was sweet of you all to regard me as a father on this day. Ah, here comes one of my children now. Hello, Mary. Hello, Daddy, and I don't mean sugar. <laughs> oh, now, Mary, don't you start kidding, because this is really one day the old man gets a break. Say, Jack. What? Why do they always have Father's Day in the middle of the month? So he can enjoy his present before he gets the bill. <laughs> wow! <laughs> By the way, what did you send your father this year? A check. You know me, Mary, a nice, fat check. What'd you send your dad? A poem. You can't cash that either. A poem? Well, well. You want to hear it? No, I don't, and I'm glad I'm not your father. So is Mama. <laughs> Certainly quick on the trigger today. 
My goodness. Hello, Kenny. Hello, Pop, and I don't mean sort of. <laughs> well, at least you know what day this is. That's a surprise. It was to me, too. Hmm. Say, Jack, I had a heck of a time picking out a present for my father. I didn't know what to get him. Well, it's just a thought, Kenny. Why didn't you take him out and buy him a nice dinner? Oh, he hasn't got much of an appetite. He hasn't, huh? Well, why didn't you buy him a tie? He hasn't got much of a neck, either. <laughs> Well, that is a problem. Say, why don't you get him some handkerchiefs? He hasn't got a nose, I'll scream. <laughs> Gee, I don't know what to get. Well, give him a sleeping powder, and when he wakes up, it'll be tomorrow. You know, Jack, I don't want to brag, but I think I uh, sent my dad a real novelty. You did? What was it, Don? Said he, falling into the trap. Well, uh... <laughs> I shopped around until I found half a dozen neckties, each one corresponding in color to a different flavor of Jello. Oh. You know, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Oh, yes, there's nothing like a lemon necktie. <laughs> oh, nothing. Oh, <laughs> well, wasn't that clever of me? Yes, but Don, don't you ever think of anything besides Jello? Well, I think of my wife. I bet she's a strawberry blonde. <laughs> Mary, that's not nice. Oh, hello, Phil. Hello, Jack, and I don't mean what you owe me. <laughs> Say, what is this, anyway? <laughs> Jack, did you see my act at the Paramount Theater this week? Why, sure, Phil, and you're doing a swell job. I was there Thursday night with Mary. Uh, we went Thursday afternoon. Oh, that's right, Thursday afternoon. It's cheaper, then. Uh, quiet. <laughs> But I want to tell you, Phil, you're certainly doing great business, considering the hot weather. Oh, yes, the house has jammed every performance. And you know, Phil, I like the way they advertise your act in front of the theater. What does it say? 20 degrees cooler inside. Oh, <laughs> well. I don't see how you boys can play such hot music in such a cool place. We got an oil stove in the tuba. <laughs> Why don't you put long underwear on the piano? I'm wearing that. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Hello? Yes? Speaking. Well, gee, that's great. What time? Oh, sure, I'll be right over. Goodbye. Well, fellas, you'll have to carry on without me. Why? What's the matter? I gotta go rush right over at the studio. They finally got to me, and they're shooting my big scene today. Well, congratulations. Good luck, Jack. I better get right over there. So long, fellas. So long. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jack. You gotta hear my father's day poem first. But, Mary, this is important, too. They're waiting for me. Let him wait. Dear old father, dear old father... Mary, I gotta how go. How I love to sing your praise and to bring you fondest greetings on this day of days of days. Look, Mary, I've Neck got... Neckties you get by the score. Oh. Some are new and some are tore. Yeah. <laughs> and cigars you get galore. Eeny, meeny, miny, more. Mary, even if this was good, I have to go. Uh, this is the last verse. Oh, uh... Happy New Year, dear old father. New Year? How'd that get in there? I don't know. <laughs> Happy, happy, dear old father. When you're happy, I am too. So be happy, dear old pappy. Get up and do the Susie Q. <laughs> Susie Q? Can I go now? Uh, one more verse. Oh, no. So long, fellas. Mm, he wouldn't say that. Long fella. Sing, Kenny. <laughs> Come 
one just like you appears. Is there any greater glory, any greater thrill? No, never in a was never in a million years from the picture Wake Up and Live, sung by Kenny Baker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will switch you over to Jack Benny's dressing room at the Paramount Studio and see what's going on. Take it away! Oh, Mr. Westmore. Yes? Look, Wally, I don't want to tell you your business, but don't you think you put too much makeup on my cheeks? Well, I lost my glasses and I can't see a thing without them. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> yeah. Why, only this morning I put W.C. Fields' nose on Marlene Dietrich. <laughs> Oh, well, she'll find out when she sneezes. <laughs> Gee, I hope I look all right. Now, let me see. Uh, where did I put that powder puff? It's in my ear. Oh, yes, I'm always leaving that around. Hmm. Oh, Rochester. Rochester. Yes, sir, boss. Uh, did you lay out my full dress suit? Yes, sir. Did you? Uh, hmm? You mean the one with the red stripes? No, the black one with the tail. <laughs> You've been pressing the pants for an hour. Are they done yet? Yes, sir. They're done to a crisp. <laughs> and shine my shoes, too. Oh, Mr. Westmore. Yes? Yeah? I wish you had your glasses. You got too much eye shadow on my lips. <laughs> Who ever heard of blue lips? Don't worry. They'll photograph green. <laughs> green lips. That's fine. If I pucker them up, I'll look like an artichoke. <laughs> fine mess. Now, let me see. Where are my tweezers? Oh, yes, here they are. What are you going to do, pluck my eyebrows? No, just loosen them. Oh. <laughs> Hold still now. She loves me. Ow. She loves me not. Ow. She loves me. Ow. Hey, is there any other way you can find out? <laughs> Gee whiz, you think I had pedals. Now, what's next? Oh, yeah, shall I put on your toupee? No, I don't think I need one. I, I have hair enough, haven't I? Uh, yes, if you're going to play the part of a coconut. <laughs> Well, let it go till I see the script, anyway. Well, I guess that's all. So long. So long. Hey, that's the window. It's too late now. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, da, 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 de, da. See, my makeup doesn't look so bad at that. Gee, I wish they'd send for me and get started shooting. Operator, get me Mr. Walsh, the director, on stage five. Walsh, Walsh, like in rare bit. <laughs> Come in. Pardon me, Mr. Benny, but did I leave my tweezers hanging in your eyebrow? Just a minute, I'll look. Oh, yes, here they are. I thought it was an eclipse. Thanks. <laughs> See, what a careless... Go oh, hello, Mr. Walsh. Uh, this is Jack Benny. Are you ready for me yet? Well, I'm... Yes, but... Well, I'm... Not used to being kept waiting, you know. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not trying to rush you, but I think that... But I think that... But I think that... But I, oh, goodbye. <laughs> These directors are so independent. Hey, Rochester, are you shining my shoes? Yes, sir, but this tan polish don't seem to take on patent leather. Well, keep on, I gotta have them. Okay, but you better wear long spats. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, hello, fellas. Hi, Hi you Jack. Jack. Thought we'd come over and see you. Are you surprised? Yeah. Well, Mary, I'm already made up and ready to shoot. How do I look? You look like a rainbow that got caught in an egg beater. <laughs> well, it's that darn makeup man. He forgot his glasses. Huh? Well, by the way, Jack, uh, what's your picture all about? Well, Don, the way the story goes, as I understand it, I'm married to Ida Lupino, but Gail Patrick is also in love with me because she thinks that my wife is crazy about Richard Arlen. Mm, I see. You do? Well, uh -huh. but <laughs> Richard, but Richard, you see, whose secretary has been going around with my uncle, is nuts about Ida Lupino's sister who is infatuated with the Yacht Club boy. <laughs> you know, the eternal triangle. But Jack, that sounds as though it would be very confusing to an audience. Well, the whole thing is explained by a big dance number. Who's going to do the dance, Einstein? <laughs> Well, it's not that complicated. Gee, it's all clear to me. There, you see? Well, I can't make head nor tail of it, Jack. What's the name of your picture? Charlie Chan in a revolving door. It is not. 
call Artisan Models. Artisan Models? What's that got to do with it? Well, you got to give it some title. You can't call it Ham and Cabbage. <laughs> Why not? Because I'm on a diet and shut up. <laughs> you know, I didn't write the picture. Well, someone should have. Oh, poof. <laughs> Come in. They're all ready for you, Mr. Benny, on stage five. Okay, be right with you. Come on, fellas. Can we watch you work, Jack? Sure, the more the merrier. Hey, Rochester, are my shoes ready? I'm just shining the laces now. <laughs> well, hurry up. They're waiting for me. Hurry on, fellas. That's when there's a rotten egg. <laughs> Yes, they're about ready to shoot. You know, I'm a little nervous today for the first time. Funny, an old trooper like me. You know? Oh, you'll be all right, Jack. Why don't you sit down and relax? No, oh, I thought I was sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Mary, were you this nervous when you shot your first scene? Yes, but I was doing a rumba and nobody noticed it. <laughs> oh, oh, I think. Hey, Jack, look who's here. Oh, hello, Andy. Hiya, Buck. Thought I'd come over and watch your work. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did. Gee, it's hot under these lights. I hope my makeup isn't running. How do I look, Andy? You look like Crosby's horse on a muddy track. <laughs> yeah, I am a little splotchy, ain't I? I don't know what's the matter with me today. I feel kind of faint and dizzy-like. Why don't you hold your breath and count ten? Kenny, I haven't got the hiccup. You will in a minute. I will not. Imagine me kissing Ida Lupino while I'm hiccuping. <laughs> I tried it once and caught her right between the eyes. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. Well, it was better than nothing. <laughs> Be ready for it a minute, Mr. Benny. Okay. <laughs> oh, pardon me. <laughs> it's all your fault, Mary. Say, Buck, before you start shooting, I'll be glad to give you a few pointers on your love scene. Now, Andy, what do you know about love scenes? Plenty. I'm Clark Gable, Robert Taylor, and Charlie Butterworth rolled into one. <laughs> Charlie Butterworth? What do you got him in there for? Modesty. <laughs> Well, all right, Andy, what's your... Darn it. What's your system? Well, Buck, there's different ways of making a gal like you. Some fellas win them one way and some win them another. I got mine on bank night. Quiet. <laughs> what are you saying, Andy? Well, if you want a gal to fall in love with you, you gotta treat her rough. Be hard-boiled. <laughs> Andy, last week you told me you were always running out getting the girls' sandwiches. What's rough about that? I put too much mustard on them. That's what. <laughs> my, my, he is rough, isn't he, Mary, huh? Yeah, he's a regular cave-in. <laughs> he sure is. Huh? Be ready for it a minute, Mr. Benny. Okay. <laughs> isn't it awful? <laughs> hey, Rochester, have you got my shoes? Here they are, boss. Those are my sports shoes. 
Where'd you ever see sport shoes with a full dress suit? In the Harlem Esquire. <laughs> Well, run over to my dressing room and get my plain black ones and hurry. Black coat, black shoes, black pants. Yeah. You was the most monotonous man I ever worked for. <laughs> I'd fire him if he didn't have an iron-bound contract. Hey, Bill. Bill, is Jack Benny on the set? Oh, that's Raoul Walsh, my director. Here I am, Mr. Walsh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hello, Jack. Now, first I'll explain this scene to you, and then we'll have a good rehearsal. Well, I hope you're not going to give me too much to do on my first day. Don't worry. No. Now, as the scene opens, we find your wife and her lover seated in the drawing room. I see. And you're in the same room, hiding in a barrel. <laughs> in a barrel? Uh, what's a barrel doing in a drawing room? The roof leaks. Go away. <laughs> but look, uh, Mr. Walsh... I'm sorry. Look, if I'm in the barrel all the time, I mean, how will the audience know it's me? Well, every now and then you can stick your nose out of the bunghole. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Of course, there, there won't be any expression there. You know. <laughs> Once you're here, you can wiggle it. Nobody asked you, Kenny. There was just some way of identifying me. In I it. have a suggestion, Jack. What is it, Don? Well, now, why don't you paint jello in big red letters all over the barrel? That would identify you. Now, yeah. there's an idea. Yeah, but wouldn't that sort of detract from my nose? We'll there? figure that out later. Oh. <laughs> now, now, to get back to the scene, mm -hmm. you overhear your wife and her lover planning to run away. Uh -huh. And as they start to leave, you stick your head out of the barrel and holler, Hey! I holler, Hey! Huh? See, then what? You duck back in the barrel and we fade out. <laughs> oh, I see. But gee, poking my head in and out of a barrel like that, I'll, I'll look something like a turtle, won't I? <laughs> That's it exactly. Oh. Gee, Mary, I don't see why they have to give me, get me for this part. Yeah, with so many turtles out of work. <laughs> oh, well. All right, we're ready for a rehearsal. Where's the barrel? It's just being painted, Mr. Walt. Well, make it snappy. Yeah, I'm glad they're not ready yet. It'll give me a chance to memorize my part. <laughs> Say, Jack. What? Look, isn't that your makeup man over there painting the barrel? Where? Oh, yes. <laughs> so wonder he can see it without his glasses. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Westmore. Hello, Marlene. <laughs> Marlene. We're all ready, Mr. Walsh. Good. Places, everybody. Right here, Mr. Walsh. I'm ready. Come on, Jack. Get in that barrel. Yes, sir. Gee, it isn't dry yet. <laughs> oh, well, my hands won't show. <laughs> Mary, I'm in the barrel. Gee, it's lonesome in here. What do you want, a floor show? <laughs> now, this is a rehearsal. Remember, Jack, you hear them talk, and when they start to leave, stick out your head and holler, Hey! Hey, I got it. I got it now. Quiet, everybody. Action. Oh, darling, how much longer must I wait? Don't you love me? Yes, dearest. But what can I do about Gerald, my husband? That's me, folks. Quiet and pull in your head. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Mr. Walsh. Continue. Oh, you never cared for him? Are you going to give up our one chance for happiness? No. No. Then fly with me tonight. Come, let us away. Yes, my sweet. Away. Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how, how is that, Mr. Walsh? It's not hey there, it's just the one word hey. Well, I thought by adding the word there, it would give me a feeling of being worried, you know. Leave it out, the script is too long as it is. <laughs> well, well, you're the boss, you're the boss. Let's try it again. <laughs> Get back in the barrel, Jack. I know what I'm doing. They take these nails out of here. One more rehearsal. Places everybody and make it a good one. Action. Oh, darling, how much longer must I wait? Don't you love me? Yes, dearest. But what can I do about Gerald, my husband? <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> oh, you never cared for him? Are you going to give up our one chance for happiness? No, no. Then fly with me tonight. Come, let us away. Yes, my sweet. Away. Yes, my sweet. Away. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my line. <laughs> Isn't that awful? <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Walsh, but it's hard to remember two things at once. I mean, I have to say hey and...
stick my head out of the barrel at the same time. <laughs> well, well, I'll make it easy for you, Jack. Just say hey and don't stick your head out of the barrel. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I'll get it next time. It just happens to be one of those words that gets you, you know. Oh, Jack, hey isn't such a hard word to remember. Just think of what a horse eats. What a horse eats. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, say, that'll help. All right, Mr. Walsh, here I go again. <laughs> yeah, I wish they'd put a door in this thing. Or All right, now. Ready, everybody? This is a picture. Light them up. Camera. We're turning. Action! Oh, darling, how much longer must I wait? Don't you love me? Yes, dearest. But what can I do about Gerald, my husband? Oh, you never cared for him. Are you going to give up our one chance for happiness? No, no. Then fly with me tonight. Come, let us away. Yes, my sweet. Away. Oats! <laughs> Oats. Oats? Oh, that's your fault, Mary. This is awful. Oh, what's the matter with you, Jack? There's nothing the matter with me. It's the part. <laughs> hey, what kind of a dramatic speech is that? <laughs> Why, you can't act any more than that barrel. I can't, eh? No! <laughs> oh, what are you laughing at, Mary? This is a fine picture. Artist and hiccup. Oh, does Paul Muley have to go through with this? Hey, Buck! What? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Ice cream is a great favorite with everybody, and here's how to make the grandest ice cream anybody ever tasted. Make it with Jell-O ice cream powder, a wonderful new product that makes rich, creamy ice cream quickly and inexpensively. Why, actually, with Jell-O ice cream powder, you use less cream and you get more ice cream. And you make it right in the freezing trays of your refrigerator. Or you can use a hand freezer and get the same delicious results. Just combine Jell-O ice cream powder, some milk, some cream and sugar, And soon you'll have a quarter and a half of velvety, rich, mellow ice cream. A quarter and a half of ice cream. Because Jell-O ice cream powder makes twice as much ice cream as most other such products you can buy. Jell-O ice cream powder comes in five flavors. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, lemon, and maple. There's unflavored, too, so that you can make any other flavor you prefer. Serve ice cream made this new modern way with Jell-O ice cream powder soon. Ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O ice cream powder. This is the last number of the 38th program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night for our final broadcast of the season. I'd like to announce that the part of the director was played by my good friend, Robert Emmett Keene. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as a little surprise, I'd like to introduce another very dear friend of mine who happens to be up here tonight. A personality whom I know you will be glad to hear is returning to the air in his original role of Captain Henry of the Maxwell House Showboat. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Winninger. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Charlie, I'm happy to hear you're coming back on the Showboat program. Uh, When do you take over the helm? On July 8th. July 8th, huh? Yes, sir. We're going to truck on down the Mississippi. Well, tell me, Charlie... (laughs) Oh, pardon me. Uh, what kind of a show are you going to put on for the folks? Well, now, it's going to be the same old showboat with a brand new crew. It is, huh? Yep. You know, Jack, I'll be mighty happy to greet all my... I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right, it's all right. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'll be mighty happy to greet all my old friends. Yeah, say, Charlie, you know my gang here, don't you? Don oh, Wilson, sure, sure. Bill Harris. And yeah. this is Mary Livingston. Oh, hello, Mary. You're a mighty pretty gal. Thank you. Well, Captain, how about taking me for a ride? Mary, that's Captain Henry of Showboat. Oh, I thought he had a yacht. (laughs) Don't pay any attention to her, Charlie. (coughs) I won't. (coughs) And Charlie, Charlie, this is our tenor, Kenny Baker. Oh, hello. Glad to know you, Kenny. Hello. Kenny, you remember Charlie Winninger. He was in that picture, Three Smart Girls. Which one was he? (laughs) Now, Kenny, cut it out. Oh, it's all right, Jack. I like the little brat. (laughs) Well, Charlie, I want to thank you for coming up here tonight. I'm tickled to death you dropped in, and I want to wish you continued success in many happy dockings of showboat. Well, thank you, Jack, and I hope all my old friends will be listening in on July 8th. Oh, uh, Captain Henry, you want to hear something? Uh, what is it, Mary? Uh, dear old father, dear old father, how I love to oh, say your prayers. Oh, good night, I... folks. Good night. Look for the new showboat program with Charles Winninger's Captain Henry with the comedy of Jack Haley, the singing of Nadine Connor, Thomas Thomas, and Virginia Barrell, 
with Warren Hall and the music from Meredith Wilson. Remember the date, July 8th. The Jell-O program comes to you from Hollywood over the red network of the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>